Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie Rublitz and I am on a one year mission to completely change my wardrobe to clothes that actually fit me. So this week we are doing a pattern review on a free pattern. So stick around. All right, so for this month's review of a free pattern, uh, I always want to call it a free pattern review, but like the review would be free anyways. The pattern is free. I have a link. It's not my pattern. I found it on the interwebs for y'all. It's, it's a free pattern and I'm reviewing it. Um, so this pattern, I've been looking for things that are like wardrobe staples, but that have like a little extra something, some like design detail or some kind of element that just like elevates that garment just a little bit. Um, in shopping for long length clothes for myself when I look for things that are within my budget and that I can actually get in a long length, I'm really limited in terms of I get solid t-shirts and solid tank tops. Not a lot of pattern, not a lot of like anything going on, but it's what I can get. So in replacing those garments, um, as, as I am cleaning up my wardrobe, I do want to just like have something that's kind of a little bit interesting. So I don't feel like I'm just wearing the same thing in a different color every single day, which is pretty much what I do now. Uh, so you can see this is the pattern and there's this like little detail. Well, everything's backwards. There's this little detail at the bottom of the shirt because the shirt is actually two panels that overlap to kind of give that tulip detail. Now, a really cool thing about this pattern, there's lots of options for it, uh, which is always so great to get in a pattern because you, there's more than one garment that you can make. But one of the options, if you know anybody, if you are an expectant mom or you're a nursing mom or you know somebody who is, one of the options is to actually put like a privacy layer under the tulip layers so that it can be a really great nursing top. So uh, pass it along to anybody. If you, if you can't use it that way, pass this pattern along. Do you have to be a nursing mom to wear this? No, you don't. Uh, that's just like one option to the pattern. So the fabric I'm gonna be using, not really like the recommended fabric, like the recommended fabric is a jersey. Um, this stuff is, it's a really sort of loose knit. Uh, and so it's kind of almost like if you're making like a light sweater, but I think it'll be cute anyways, and I like a challenge. One of the things I'm going to be doing to make this fabric a little bit more workable is I am gonna be using a double needle for my top stitching. So if you've never used a double needle before, do not distress, do not despair. It's not that hard. Uh, really, you just put your double needle in. You make sure, I just like crank my machine by hand to make sure that it's going to clear the foot, that I have the right foot in. Uh, and you just run two spools of thread. And you run the second thread in exactly the same. Some people just grab both threads and run them both through their machine. I like to completely thread my machine with one thread and then I completely thread the machine with the other thread so that I don't have any like knots or anything funky going on that's gonna cause me problems down the road. So this is what we'll be using for top stitching. Uh, yeah, let's dive in. All right, so here's the instructions. There's a couple things that I just wanted to show you. Here. The instructions look pretty straightforward. Now these are all the options that this pattern comes with. There's quite a few. So there's just like a, a regular hemmed shirt that has a bit of the like souped hemline in the back. There's a banded shirt. There's long sleeve, short sleeves, and um, three quarter sleeves. So you can mix and match your sleeve with whichever style of shirt you like. There is the tulip front and then there is the nursing under layer as well. So lots of options with this pattern. Also, it says patterns are drafted for an average height of five foot five. <laughs> so we will be checking out the blog post on how to lengthen uh, this pattern, but it will also show us where how to shorten the pattern. So if that's something that you need, um, we will check into that. I, I would imagine it's just going to tell us where to make the line for lengthening and shortening. Um, but if you do need a little bit of extra guidance when you're doing that process, then they've given you a resource, which is really nice. Uh, yeah, and I also wanted to show you that she uses different kinds of fabrics in all of her, um, her photo components. So different fabrics for each layer of the shirt so that it's really easy for you to see um, 
what's going on in the photos, which is really nice. It's kind of a, a nice added touch just to sort of clarify things, but everything is step-by-step -step photo tutorial. So um, yeah, I think that's all, it's super helpful. It's a really great way to do a pattern. So I have my pattern all taped together, and it turns out I made a bit of a mistake. I thought that I had clicked the button to print actual size, when in fact I printed the button to uh, fit the page to size. So make extra sure that you click that. I'm going to have to make a bigger size because I don't want to waste all this paper. So I'm just going to make a bigger size than I would normally um, need to because I did end up having to trim. These are supposed to be no trim pages that you can just tape together without doing any fussy cutting. Uh, so I ended up having to fussy cut. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it'll work out fine though. I double checked my measurements against the measurements of the actual pattern. And so I, I know that I'll be fine with it the way that it is. Um, if it was a more structured garment, I probably would have to be a little bit more cautious and either remark some stuff or, um, or reprint it. But I'm not gonna worry about that this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my pattern and then we will look at what we need to do to lengthen it. Now, I'm just gonna use my grid lines here to help me out a little bit. So I've lined both sides of my neck up on my grid lines because I want to make sure that I'm making a straight line, right? I don't want this to be curved, like on an angle in any way that's just going to mess up my fit. So I'm going to take my first line right to the bottom of the neckline and I'm using this grid line to line up my ruler so that I can make sure that my line is going to be very straight. That will also help me so that I know that I'm adding my cut line onto the back piece where the neckline is different. I'll be able to just measure down and, and it'll be easier. Now I'm going to uh, go in the narrowest part of the bodice is where I'm going to put my next line. So. Again, I'm going to line up on my grid lines so that I can have sort of a reference point on either side of the pattern. And I'm just putting 15 inches because I can tell with, uh, with how I've lined up my grid lines that um, this line is 15 inches down. Because remember I have to do the same thing to the back piece of the pattern as well. Okay, and so this line is at 6 and 5 eighths. It, it might seem daunting, it might seem like a lot of work to go through, but um, it's, it's actually not. Once you've done one, it gets a lot easier and it's so nice to just have clothes that fit that it's 100% it's worth it. Now I'm gonna cut my pattern pieces and splice it back together with regular paper. My top splice is only going to be one inch as that splice is going to increase the width of my armholes and I don't really want my sleeves to be super baggy on me. The bottom splice is going to be five inches to give me a total of six inches of added length in this shirt. I'm going to put one more splice on the side and just freehand draw a line better connecting the pattern top and the pattern bottom just because when you uh, divide the pattern it kind of changes the lines a little bit. I'm going to do the exact same process using the measurements that I took off the front and I'm going to apply those to the back. There's the back completed and the front completed and I'm going to cut up my fabric. Now the first thing we need to stitch together are both of the side seams. Because this is a three panel shirt, you'll be able to open those right up and it'll be one long garment at that point. So when it's one long garment, you're going to fold the edge of your hem under and then run it through with the double needle for the hem. Now, if you're finding that in between your rows of stitching with your double needle that um, you're getting a really big pucker in that space, you can increase your uh, stitch length or decrease your tension and that will help with that. Next, we're going to do the shoulder seams. Now, it says in the instructions to do um, each side separately, but I just did them all at once and pinned everything and it worked out fine.
Next I'm going to stitch those with a straight stretch stitch and a zigzag, which is also what I did on the side seams. Now I need a strip of fabric for my neckline, so I'm just squaring up my fabric right there and I'm going to cut a 2 inch strip for the neck trim. And I believe this one for the size that I was working on needed to be 27 and 3 quarters of an inch um, long and that measurement is given to you in the instructions. Then I just press that in half. I'm also pressing the sleeves at this time just because I had my iron out I might as well get it all done at once. Now that neck trim that I cut, I've sewn that together into a loop and I'm just refolding it back in half and I'm going to fold it one way and then fold it the other way so that I can get the quarter marks and I will do the same with the neck of the shirt and then I can line up all the places where I put a pin at, the, at each quarter section and that will just help me get a really even stretch of that neck trim throughout the garment. You don't want to have like all your um, stretch bunched up on one side of the shirt because then it actually might bunch instead of just having the neck trim nicely pulled throughout the whole garment. Once I've got this all pinned on, I'm going to use a stretch, straight stretch stitch again to attach it and then press it down. Then I'm going to go back around with my double needle and I'm going to hem that and I'm going to hem the sleeve. Well, here is the tulip tee. I'm really liking it. I like the, the little detail in it. I did add that extra six inches. For me, adding five to six inches for a top is um, pretty standard. Uh, amount for me to lengthen. I did want the where the the petals of the tulip come together I did want that to be quite low which means that I wound up with a, a fairly low garment in the back which I actually really like. Um, I, I just I like the detail. A part of me when I saw the pattern I was like mm, we'll give this a try but like what's gonna happen when like a gust of wind comes up and nothing because there's another whole layer there and the wind isn't going to be going in both directions. Plus um, I typically wear a tank top underneath my shirts. I feel like because this uh, fabric is a little bit more on the sheer side I actually really like having something darker underneath because I feel like it kind of gives a different depth um, just to, to the design element which I really I'm really digging that. So I hope you'll give this pattern a try. I will link it down below in the description. Uh, it was an easy make. It's like, it takes like a day and, and I had to do all that alteration work to my pattern and I still got it done really fast. So go ahead and give it a try. I will do another review of a free pattern next month. Next week we're moving on to something else. So um, make sure you hit that dingy bell. If you don't hit the bell, apparently you don't get all the notifications about my channel. So hit the bell and I will see you next week.